ourselves these same high standards. We can't afford for the information that we compile to be biased and subjective. It needs to be gathered and analysed as scientifically and as objectively as possible. So we need to use a quantitative research methodology that ensures that we achieve these goals. So for a start, it's obviously important to have experience in running this kind of project and from what Mars has said, CIJ has obviously got a lot of experience in this field. Um, in terms of me, while I was completing my doctoral research in New Zealand, uh, I assisted Dr. Babak Bahadur uh, with a media monitoring project which covered the 2008 New Zealand general election. Uh, so I helped build the coding scheme for that research and did all of the content analysis of the election news in the five newspapers and two television channels that we covered. So I've worked at the ground level on this kind of project um, and also seen how it needs to be organised. Obviously, due to the relative size uh, between New Zealand and Malaysia, this project is a much bigger one. So we've got 29 different sources spanning print, television and online media. We're covering Peninsula as well as Eastern Malaysia, as well as covering their sources in four different languages. So because of this, we'd have to, we've had to have extensive discussions with the team leaders who are based sort of uh, by media, so either print, television, online, and also with the different language groups uh, to ensure that our coding scheme and all our related forms and information doesn't pose any problems, particularly in terms of language translation, which I was quite worried about because I only speak English and the notion of covering all four different languages was quite daunting for me. Um, but fortunately, all of our language team leaders have made sure that we've taken steps to deal with all the problems that might arise from this, such as taking coding notes in the monitoring language rather than translating into English on the fly, so that we can then go through later and translate consistently in one go, rather than having lots of different people doing the translation. Um, in terms of the need to have team leaders, we're going to have at least 50 people working on the monitoring and the coding of data, and then they'll feed this raw data up to the team leaders, who will then feed it up to me and Mars and Abby, who uh, will conduct the analysis and generate statistics. So it's important to get a really firm kind of communication and organisational hierarchy in place so we can make sure that all the data flows smoothly upwards and also that any issues or problems that arise can be communicated sort of in both directions, uh, upwards and downwards, and then we can deal with them quickly and efficiently. Obviously, web technologies and platforms make this job a lot easier, but it's been important to get the framework of this hierarchy in place right from the beginning. Uh, all the media monitors are also required to sign a code of conduct, which is a binding agreement saying that they'll perform their data collection in an objective manner and avoid inserting their own bias into the data. There's also obviously a totally different media and political environment in Malaysia as compared to New Zealand, so the research framework and coding scheme has been altered to accommodate this. So we're looking for much different data than the New Zealand study. For example, the issues of religion and ethnicity barely kind of impact on New Zealand politics with the obvious exception of Māori politics. So there's a whole extra section to the coding scheme in terms of that. The research has also been undertaken for quite different reasons, as Professor Nain will talk about. In New Zealand, there was a strong suspicion of the news media having a left-wing bias. Uh, which was actually incorrect, as we found out. Um, and the ownership and regulatory structures of media corporations here are very different from in New Zealand. In terms of the monitoring and coding of the news material itself, this has been done as the, at the sentence level to ensure that the research is as unbiased and as objective as we can get it. So to explain what I mean by this, it's perhaps easiest to first understand what coding at the article level would be like. So if we were coding at the article level, then we'd get our media monitors or coders to read the entire article and then to record data about the article in its entirety. For example, who was it about and what was it about in general? Uh, how was that person, party or issue portrayed, negatively or positively? Obviously, if you ask people to do this, it gives them ample opportunity, whether they do it consciously or not, to insert their own political opinions and biases into their interpretation of the article. And we want to avoid that as much as possible because we need to generate reliable statistics and objective statistics. So we're coding at the sentence level. So for each sentence in each news article or segment that our coders analyse from full stop to full stop or implied full stop to full stop in terms of television, they'll record who or what is mentioned and will only record this mention as being positive or negative in tone when there's clear evidence of this located in the vocabulary used. So if a politician is called an idiot in the article, obviously that's a negative mention. If a politician is attacking someone else or being attacked by someone else, then this will be a negative mention for them, because in politics, attacks generate a double negative. Attacking someone else is negative or dirty politics, and being attacked is also negative or damaging. 
If our coders are at all unsure whether the tone is positive or negative, then they've been trained to code it as neutral. So what exactly are we looking for in our coding? We're looking at which political figures are being given coverage, how often they're used as sources, that is, how often they're allowed to speak rather than simply being spoken about. We also want to know how they're being talked about. Are they being given good or bad press? Uh, we're looking at which political parties, coalitions and organisations are given coverage and whether they're being given good or bad press as well. We're also collecting data on a wide range of policy and non-policy issues, ranging from issues related to ethnicity and religion, to coverage of visionary policies such as Southern Malaysia, to coverage of gender and sexuality related issues, and to various human and democratic rights. Some of the key issues we'll be focusing in on, as Masters also mentioned, are the differences in news coverage between state-owned or controlled and independent media sources, how much coverage and what kind of coverage different political figures and parties are given, uh, election, electioneering activity in the form of gifts given or promises made, and also the difference in coverage of issues between language groups and between Peninsula and Eastern Malaysia, as well as the coverage of issues relating to ethnicity, religion and gender. There's really too much detail to go into in the coding scheme.